everybody, I am Nico D. So today I'm back with a new SBC, finally something new to review. So this is the Raksha Zero. So this is a very small SBC, but it is very potent. So this sock is pretty good. So this has got the S905Y2 from Amlogic. So this is clocked to 1.8 GHz. These are 4 times A53 cores, but they consume almost nothing, so that is really awesome. So we can compare this with, of course, first this. So this was the first that came out in this form factor, this is the Raspberry Pi Zero, but this only has got one core. So this is a lot more performance than this. This is also 32 bit. This is 64 bit, full 64 bit. This has got 512 megabytes of RAM. This has got 4 gigabytes of RAM. This only has got an SD card reader for IO. This has got an SD card reader, but also an EMMC, I think. I don't know, I think this is the EMMC, I'm not sure, or it is this one, or the RAM, I'm not sure. So there is also, what do we have got here? So here we have got, so this was the first in this form fact that had four cores. So this is the Banana Pi M20. This used to be pretty good, but it does get very hot. So that's a big difference with this. This doesn't overheat at all, even without a heatsink or so. Just like that, it doesn't overheat. So that is awesome. So another one I can compare it with is this one. So this is the NanoPi Duo 2. So this has got a camera. So this is a very cool SBC, but it doesn't have got HDMI. So you cannot connect a display to it. This does have got HDMI, so this is just like a full SBC, like this. So this small little thing is just like this, like the Raspberry Pi 4. So it is even a little bit more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 4 when it is clocked to its default clocks. So this is clocked to 1.8 gigahertz. This is only clocked to 1.5 gigahertz by default, but you can overclock it, of course. So this has got HDMI, also micro HDMI, just like the Raspberry Pi 4. And it has got two times USB-C. So one for power and the other for USB, of course. So this little thing packs a very big punch. So in this video we are gonna take a look at different images for this board. So I tried a lot of different images. So of course the Debian from Raksha themselves. I don't like Debian that much, so that's not what I'm going to use. Then I tried Armbian, but Armbian isn't supported for this board. So no Armbian support for Raksha boards anymore. That is an elephant in the room, but I did talk about it. So that is a pity, I can't say anything more about it than that it is a pity. I like Raksha boards, I love Armbian, so I am in the middle, can't do anything about it. So I also tried Manjaro on it and for me Manjaro is good enough, so I'm gonna stick with Manjaro. I've installed Manjaro on the EMMC. I'm going to show you how to do that because this board doesn't work like most other SBCs. You can't just put the SD card in it and expect it will work. So when it arrived, it came with Android pre-installed. This Android version isn't very functional. It doesn't have got the Google Play Store, but of course you can install it yourself manually. I don't like Android, so first thing I did was remove Android. And for that you need a tool. I will show it with my Windows computer. If you are using Linux, then it is a little bit harder to do and you will have to read the wiki for that. But when you are using Linux on your main computer, I expect you to be able to follow a wiki. So that's no problem. So we are going to take a look on how we are going to erase Android from the EMMC. Then we are going to take a look on how to install Manjaro on the EMMC. 
One thing I must say, when Manjaro is installed on the EMMC, you cannot boot Armbian anymore. So I think they use different U-boot versions and so when the U-boot from Manjaro is installed, it doesn't look to the SD card anymore, I think. So that is a pity, but you could use uh, different SD cards but when the EMMC is empty, one for Armbian and one for Manjaro if you want to test them. I am very amazed about this board. This board doesn't overheat. That is something that I'm looking for. This board consumes very little. That is very good and it performs very well. So it is clocked to 1.8 GHz which is great. So I love this board. But it does have got one small problem with the Wi-Fi. So when you boot the Wi-Fi isn't always waked up. So it will not always work the Wi-Fi. So this about one time in three, the Wi-Fi will not work. Then I reboot and the Wi-Fi works again. So it is a small problem. It is something we can work around. But I hope this can be fixed in the future. So here we go. So first the specs. So the SOC is an Amlogic S905Y2. This is a 12 nanometer lithography. The CPU is 4 times Cortex A53 at 1.8 GHz. The GPU is a Mali G31 MP2. So it comes with either 512 MB, 1 GB, 2 GB or 4 GB of memory LPDDR4. The EMMC is either no EMMC, 8 GB EMMC, 16 GB EMMC, 32 GB EMMC, 64 GB EMMC and 128 GB EMMC 5.1. So I've got 32 GB. I do have to say that I bought this board myself. Then the Wi-Fi, as I already said, this is different on different models. So it comes with 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4 or Bluetooth 5. It has got one micro HDMI 2.1 connector up to 4K 60 Hz. So it has got two USB-C ports. One USB-C is for OTG and power. This is USB 2.0 and the other is USB 3.0. On the back there is a small button for the boot. This we will need to erase Android with Windows. And then the GPIOs, so it has got a 40 pin GPIO header. I like that they use these different colors. That was the only thing that I liked about the Tinkerboard. And Raksha takes the best of everyone and puts it all together in one. Now I'm going to show you how to erase Android from the EMMC. So we go to the wiki.raksha.com. There we go to product, zero main page there installation erase emmc so there follow mass chrome guides go down then this we will need so the raksha dl so let's download that and here these files we will need so this one we will use now, so the Raksha 0 erase emmc. There are other files that are very useful, like the RZ U-Disk loader. I've used that a lot to expose my emmc. So now I open the program that I've downloaded, so RZ USB boot helper. Then I take my Raksha 0 and I press the button on the back, so the very small button on the back, you must press it. And while the button is pressed, I plug in the USB into my PC and then my PC recognizes it. Then I click select and I select the correct file and we click run. After a few seconds you will see it has found a file system, so press cancel. And what I always do first, you don't have to do this, but I always do it, is use SD card formatter to format it. Select the correct drive and format it. Okay, and now I can install Manjaro. 
So I will first show you where I download Manjaro, because at the download page from Raksha the images are not up to date. So we will go to Google and there I type Raksha 0 Manjaro release github. Ok I made a spelling error. And the first is what we need. So here we have got the rolling releases from Manjaro, so the most up to date releases. So this is the image that I've used, so the XFCE Raksha 0. There used to be a few bugs with it, but now everything works. So now I use Win32 Disk Imager to install it. So choose the correct file system, then choose my file, so Manjaro ARM XFCE, and I write that. This will take a while. So while we are waiting I can show you the download page from Raksha. So here is the download page from Raksha. This is a point they could improve on. So these images are quite old. The lineage OS is from a 2109. The Slarm are more recent images. But the Manjaro is also an older image. Retropy is also an old image and the sound didn't work with Retropy. So I couldn't use that. I want to use this for a game station. So there is also Twister OS, but this is also an old image. I don't know if there are any newer images for it. So once that is done we can plug in our HDMI and our power. And I also have got a USB-C hub for this. There is one thing I have to tell you about my USB-C hubs and my USB-C adapters. They only work at USB 3 speeds one way. So if I turn the connector it is USB 2 and if I turn it then it is USB 3. This is the same with my adapters and this is the same with my USB hub. It isn't the Raksha 0 because I tested it on the Pinebook Pro and it was the same there. Both my USB-C hub and my USB-C to A adapter are from Ugreen. So maybe they don't make good products. And the Ugreen USB-C hub also consumes a half amp. So that is more than the board consumes. So this USB-C hub just isn't useful to power it with power banks. But I've got this adapter and then using a normal USB 3 hub. Then it only consumes 0.2 amps with the board and the USB together with my keyboard dongle and mouse dongle plugged in. So the board consumes 0.1 amp when it is in idle and a half amp when it is maxed out. So that is really crazy. While it does have the performance of a Raspberry Pi 4, it consumes half of the power of the Raspberry Pi 4. So here we are in Manjaro. So Manjaro is using the Panfrost GPU driver. I must say that this isn't fully stable for the AmLogic socks. So the same as the Oldroid N2 Plus or Kadas Fim 3. The HDMI sometimes falls out for a few seconds. It doesn't happen that much but it does happen. And also the mouse pointer sometimes disappears for a quick moment. You can disable Panfrost if you don't need it. You can do it like this, then the transfer rates. So as I said, I need to have my USB-C connector connected in the right direction. So the EMMC reads is 169 megabytes per second and the write is 86 megabytes per second. So that is pretty good. So the SD reader is only 23 megabytes per second. So this is with my fastest SD card. So maybe they could do something about that. The USB-C goes to 400 megabytes read and write with my SSD. Then the temperatures. So in idle it is 44 Celsius. And maxed out it goes up to 69 Celsius. So this is different in some distros. So the buster image doesn't perform well. And there it only goes up to 66 degrees Celsius. While with the Armbian, which performed a lot better than the Buster, it went to 69 degrees. So some benchmarks. So I've done my Nico D Blender benchmark. So with the Raksha Buster XFC4 5.10, this took 26 minutes and 31 seconds. So this is a long time. 
Then with Manjaro XFC with the kernel 5.16, this took 15 minutes and 39 seconds. And with Arm Jammy XFC with kernel 5.15, this was 15 minutes and 52 seconds. All that rest me to say is that there is a Raksha 02 on the way. So this comes with the A311D from Amlogic. This is the same as a Kadas Fim 3. So this is right now one of the most powerful socks that there are. And this will be in such a small form factor. I do expect it will get a lot hotter than this. So that will be it for today. Now I can play some guitar. So for those who don't know yet, I've got a new YouTube music channel. All subscribe to that if you are interested in seeing me play music. So thank you all for watching. Please support me on PayPal or on Patreon. Only that way I can afford to buy these boards. So if you want to see me review more boards, please support me. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel. Bye!